In this video, we're going to tie the Steve Farrar bait fish. This uses the Steve Farrar SF synthetic fibers from Just Add H2O fly tying materials. We're going to take our thread here almost all the way back to the bend and I'm using some uni clear monofilament thread and uh, I'm also tying on a TMCO 600 super point hook. First thing we're going to do is we're going to tie in some material. I'm going to start with some white SF material. I'm going to take the entire length of the clump here. I'm going to pinch it halfway into the clump and I'm going to start fairly sparse here with some material. This is probably only about 20-30 fibers or so. And we're going to tie this in right in the middle of the clump. And I'm going to wrap my clear monofilament thread here forward just about an eighth of an inch. Then I'm going to take the re remaining material that's facing forward and I'm going to wrap it right over top of itself and then lash down with a couple wraps. Then I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to wrap forward just past the uh, clump and then I'm going to continue this process until I get about halfway up the, the shank of the hook and I'm going to gradually increase the uh, amount of material that I tie in with my clumps just a little by little until I get to the, the middle. And I'll wrap, pull out some of these extra fibers here, and I'll wrap my thread forward on the second clump until I hit the second clump. I'm not going to wrap up onto that uh, clump that we tied in before this one. I'm going to wrap just right up to it and you can see what it does is it props this material up when I wrap right up to it and that's exactly what we want is we want that material to be uh, propped up. Uh, gives a little bit more body to the fly and uh, makes the material stand up straight off the shank of the hook. Then I'll just kind of repeat that same process. I'll tie it in and I'll wrap right up to the clump so I get the material to stand up. And every once in a while you can just kind of get these materials to blend together. I'm just slowly adding material. And I have probably room for one more white clump. So we'll just finish it off with one more. This monofilament thread can take a little bit of getting used to. It's very, very stiff. So you have to get used to working with it. You have to keep kind of constant thread tension on it to keep it under control. There we go. Once we're about halfway, I might have gone just a little more than halfway on the white there, we can add our next color. And uh, that color can be whatever you want. It can be blue, it can be pink, uh, it can it's up to the tire and uh, we're going to use kind of an olive -y color All, a color that's actually called wild olive it's kind of a mixture of olive with a few other colors hidden in there it's a real fishy fishy color that's wild olive and we're just going to repeat the the same process that we did with the the white material. And 
and uh, you, depending on how much color you want to add, you can add this earlier in the stage of the fly or uh, later in the stage of the fly. I'd say at the rate we're doing it here, we added it a little later. I went a little more than halfway forward with that uh, white blend. So we're not going to have quite as much color with this fly. And I think I have room for maybe one more little clump. Tie it in right at the eye. There we go. Now the next thing to do is we're going to take a little feather here. You can either use just schlappen or you can use uh, just a regular webby hackle feather. I'm actually going to invert my fly here. and I'm going to take some of the material from near the base of the feather, some of the more webby material. I'm just going to pull it right off of the stem here. Just going to stand it straight up. Pull it off of the stem and I'll try to even up those little clumps as much as possible. And We're going to tie this in facing backwards just hanging over the uh, back of the fly a little bit. We'll just do a couple of real tight wraps. What this is going to do is just kind of hide the mono thread, add just a little bit of color to the fly. And what we can do real quick is just whip finish. I usually do a, a double whip finish with this monofilament since it's a little bit more difficult to deal with. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to pull all our material down off of the fly here. And you can do one of two things. You can be really careful and just kind of let go of it and just hope that it all stays down. Or what I do is I usually just take my hackle pliers and just kind of clip into it and that'll hold it all out of the way. Now the next thing, we are going to take a little bit of Loon Fly Finish. You can also use Clear Cure Goo if that uh, is the brand that you like to use. Either one works just fine. I'm just going to get it started here. i got to be careful not to get it going too fast. It comes out pretty quickly if you're not careful. I'm just going to add a little thin layer onto the body there. Then what I'm going to do is just take our feather and I'm just going to lay it down into the fly finish. Then I'll hold it in place. And I'll add just a little bit more on top. Gotta be very careful not to, to overdo it. And I'll smooth it all out with the bodkin. And then what I'm going to do is just hit it real quick with a UV light. I'm using the laser here. And that should hold it into place. And then what I can do is just build up a little bit more of a coat. First kind of step is just to keep it there. And 
Now I always like to creep up the side of the fly and get it into a few of those fibers. I'll kind of help keep it in place. Now the next thing to do is to trim the fly and this fly is designed to sit kind of at an upward angle on the hook shank kind of like so. So what I'm going to do is just shape it and trim it so that it kind of tapers rearward. And I'll kind of trim the base of the, the fly here so it tapers up a little bit. And I'll trim on the sides as well to kind of thin out the, the material. Just kind of trimming a little bit at a time. And I have to be careful not to over trim sometimes. So usually when I think it's about good, that's usually when you should stop. I've been guilty of over trimming many, many times. You can see here how that material kind of stands up off the shank of the hook. That's what we're looking for. Then the last thing you can do is add some eyes. You can use whatever eyes that you, uh, whatever brand you're a fan of. I usually either use fish skull living eyes or I'll use clear goo eyes. Today I think I have some clear goo eyes sitting here so we'll use some of those. I'm just going to take some super glue and I'm just going to add it to the side of the fly and I like to add the eye kind of right in the middle or towards the back of the shank of the hook. I don't usually like to add the eye very far forward on this fly. I like to use a fairly large eye as well. So I'll just find the spot and I'll just press it into place. Then I'll do the same thing on the other side. Now uh, when you're matching up these eyes you have to be careful not to put them on too crooked or not even so what I do is I just kinda add the super glue to the area and then what I do is I line it all up just by by looks here I'll just kinda slide the eye into place and before I press down on it I look forward on the fly head on make sure it's lined up and then I'll look down from the top of the fly as well to make sure it's lined up then once I'm sure that I've got them both lined up, I just slide them into place and then I'll squeeze nice and tight. And I actually squeeze the two eyes together. And I actually glue the two eyes together. And what this does is it uh, gives the eyes something to uh, glue to, in this case each other. And it also makes the fly 
nice and slim. We'll give you a head-on version here. You can see how it compresses those fibers and what it does is it helps stand uh, them up off the, the shank of the hook. And uh, that's pretty important on this fly. It helps add uh, body and also rigidity to the fly. And uh, the eyes really play a big part in kind of keeping the material in place. And then the last thing to do if you want to make it a little more bomb proof and help keep it from fouling what I'll actually do is I'll take some of my fly finish and I'll actually add it to some of the fibers right behind the eye and you can also kind of add it to the head as well and then again to the bottom of the fly and it just kind of helps seal everything together but it also helps keep the fly from fouling when you add it kind of to a few of those fibers and you can work it in with your your bodkin that'll help but the idea for this fly is to kind of keep all the fibers going off the top of the hook and that'll also help keep it from fouling and once you kind of have all that added like I said you can work it in with your bodkin if you really want to work it about a half an inch quarter inch into the material that'll really help if you have a few straggler fibers you can also kind of trim those out of there there's always a few at the base that I usually like to trim out that kind of just don't sit on the fly right There we go. That is the Steve Farrar bait fish. Great fly for uh, all saltwater species. And don't be fooled that this is a saltwater only pattern. This is also a great pattern for freshwater as well. You can use them for stripers, uh, just regular bass, uh, pike as well. You can tie these uh, in a lot of different sizes. I tied this here on a, uh, I think it's a two. Uh, you don't have to uh, stick with that size though. You can tie them all the way up to two aughts, three aughts. Uh, for pike and muskie, you can even use four aughts. Uh, the Steve Farrar fibers, uh, these guys are available in a lot of different colors. I think 20, 30, something like that. So uh, really the sky's the limit on what you uh, want to do. You can add barring to these flies as well. You can take your marker and uh, you can add you know, barring stripes to the fly. Uh, you can also use the Copic uh, airbrush gun and you can airbrush uh, patterns and color into these flies as well. It's really a versatile fly. You can do a lot of things with it. Tie it in a lot of different sizes. Uh, and you can also use uh, any type of eyes you want to use. Uh, what I usually do recommend is this fly is meant to be tied with uh, larger eyes. Uh, this is probably one of the smaller sized eyes I would use on the fly. This is an 8 millimeter. Uh, a lot of the Steve Farrar uh, bait fish patterns use 10 uh, and up. Uh, a lot of them, the musky and pike sizes, will use big giant 15 millimeter eyes. Uh, this fly is meant to have big eyes on it. It's meant to be a target for the, the fish to find. And uh, the eyes are nice and close to the hook, so that's kind of the idea, is they won't short strike and nip at the tail. Uh, they aim for those, those eyes. And all the material for this fly can be found, found on our website as well as the recipe information there as well uh, in the riffle.com. That is the Steve Farrar baitfish.